I would just like to say that I am terrified that even you, someone who's obviously educated, has given up hope completely. Like when, when you call upon us, you say white folk, you say black people, Jewish people. Why can't we come together? We obviously can come together. We just have to, we just have to find a way to do it. The desire is good, but the reality is the total opposite of your desire. And unfortunately, as a young lady, you are not in the position of power to make the decisions to make America work. May I, you know, as, as an audience of intelligent people, I would like to just take a moment to say to you that I really don't think you fully understand what has happened to these people that you look at as second class or inferior citizens in this nation. Black people who were brought to this country were stripped of their names, language, culture, religion, God, and taken totally away from the history of themselves. There are 30 million people who don't wear their own names, they wear your names. Who don't speak their own language, they speak English which is not their language. They never, never were allowed their own cultural expression of Africa. Don't you realize that when you turn a people upside down and inside out, then sell them, not for a day, not for a year, but for 300 years and deny us the human right to know, to read a book, to learn, to understand. And then, after 100, uh, 300 years of that, you allow us into the church, but by that time, you've painted Jesus white, God white, the angels white, and then all these black people have been subjected to a form of white supremacy, which produces in the reverse a black inferiority. And this is fulfilling what Jesus said, as a man thinketh. So is he, and as long as our people think the way they think, we will never be able to do what we as a people should do to correct our condition. Over here, please. Excuse me, I was brought up in, quote, Bedford Stevenson in my town. But I would like to say what scares us is I think we hear violence. Yes. The young lady said she's afraid of violence. And isn't it sad? that we who have been the victims of so much violence now whites fear violence from us we do not have a history of killing white people white people have a history of killing us see and what and what you fear may i say this sir what you fear and it's a deep guilt thing that white folks suffer. You are afraid that if we ever come to power, we will do to you and your fathers what you and your people have done to us. And I think you are judging us by the state of your own mind, and that is not necessarily the mind of black people. Okay, I've, I've been listening in this corner right here, and I've heard a whole lot of negative things from the white people here. When you are trying to explain yourself, the white people don't want to hear you explain yourself. They drown you out. They start already trying to drown you out and talk over you. There's a certain amount of white arrogance here, and they don't want to listen to what black people are saying. They don't understand because they don't want to understand. I've heard a woman here say, go back to Africa. Somebody said, we have a black holiday. What does that mean? So what? What does that mean? He did not say that. He said, if we have a choice what some of us can go and some of us yeah. can stay. Remember, but there's no understanding in here. People to, are just trying to, to talk. Those, to those arrogant persons. You know, when you tell us, go back, please remember where you came from. And when you, when you want to relegate somebody to a specific place, just remember what your origin is in this world. Please, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But I want you to understand that you, wherever you are on the earth, you are not a native 
anywhere. You came there and took it from the native people who are there. So please don't talk about going back because if others talk to you about that, where would you go? I agree with you. Someone said we don't agree with you. I agree with you that we live in a racist society. But just as I'm racist, some of you are being racist in the fact that you're calling me a white folk. I realize that things that I have, things, things that I have, <laughs> things that I have, I realize I, most of them I may have gotten because I'm white and I am privileged because I'm white. But I, I feel, I do feel guilty. There are feelings of guilt from being white and I realize that, but you're building walls. We build walls this high. You, we're separated right now. The white people are on this side and the black people are on that side. No, I mean, I feel that you are prejudiced towards white people. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes apparent more and more as we listen to each other and try to talk to each other that we don't perceive reality the same. And as we're talking about either reconciling differences or separating, it becomes clear that if two people are looking at the same thing, and perceiving it so differently, then the two people are operating under a different stimulus. And so when the young lady says, I am prejudiced, to be prejudiced means to judge before the fact. After 400 years of living and experiencing, we're not prejudiced. We are looking at the reality of what we have suffered and continue to suffer. Are you there? Don't we need to begin with education, begin with rewriting the textbooks in America to tell the truth about blacks and whites in America in context? Yes, yes. Please, yes. please for one second. Yes. That's what I wanted to, Minister Farrakhan, um, the education system. Our children right now are being miseducated. What can we do so that we can inform our children, educate our children. And it's sad because white folks don't know anything about black history. And it's pathetic that white folks have to wait till February to find out that we were slaves. I would like us to speak to what are we going to do to improve the education of this whole society which have cheated them from, the edu from our true heritage. May I, may I respond? I said in the first segment it was a crime of omission as well as a crime of commission. And that crime has affected both white and black. White folk have been made to believe that the history of civilization begins in Egypt and that Egypt was a white civilization. And that many whites have been made to believe that black folk were just in the jungles of Africa running around with no clothes on and never contributed anything to the advancement of civilization while at the same time there are masons and shriners some of your parents are shriners and masons and they put on the fairs of the muslim people and what they are studying is the true history of the black people of this earth i think if the proper education were given to black and white, we could come away with a healthy respect one for the other. I want to clear this that I don't think black people disrespect the tremendous accomplishments that white folk have made. But if white folk do not know what black people have contributed to the advancement of civilization, it leads to a disrespect of a whole segment of the population. And this is why today I will say that black children, as much as we need education, we don't want to go to these schools because the food that we are being fed is not proper. But any one of us can go into the schools where there's no discipline, where there's madness in the corridors and we can speak to our youth and get their attention in a matter of moments because we are teaching them that which their souls yearn for that is a proper knowledge of self and if they won't give it to us we have the responsibility to give it to ourselves